In this video, we're going to learn about the range-based for loop control structure in C++. So the range-based for loop is a different type of loop structure we have available in C++. And it's what we call a for each loop that executes the loop body for each element in a range. Let's go over an example of a regular for loop first, and then we'll create a range-based for loop next. So a regular for loop looks like this. We could have some array of elements that we want to loop over. So we'll populate the array with the elements from one to 10. A regular for loop will involve a counter variable in this situation. We'd say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And we're gonna use i as our index into this array here. We could output each element in the array. So we could say c out array at index i, followed by an end line. And if we save this and run it, and we'll get the elements from one to 10 in that array. Now, whenever we have a situation like this, where we have a counter variable that starts off at zero, goes up until the length of the array or whatever range we're working with and increments by one, we're doing something for each element in that array or whatever else it is. In situations like that, where we wanna do something for each element, that's a situation where using a range-based for loop is gonna make sense. So a range-based for loop looks like this. We would say for, and then we have a declaration here. We'll say int element, then colon, then here's where we put the range expression. So we'll just say array, because array is gonna be our range. Then we'll have a loop body here. And in our loop body here, we're also gonna output the array element, but we'll say C out element and then end line here. And this loop here is gonna do the exact same thing as this loop here. We'll actually comment out this one. So the way this loop works is that the loop body is gonna execute for each element in the array. And each time it executes, element is going to be assigned that value of the array. So first, the loop body is gonna execute with element set to one. Then the loop body will execute again with element set to two. Then the loop body will execute again with element set to three, and so on. So the loop body is going to run for each element in the array. So let's save it and run it. And we'll find that again, we get the elements from one to 10 output. So why even bother to use this style of loop when we can use this range-based for loop instead? Well, sometimes we have to. For example, if we wanted to skip every other element when working with this array, we would have something like this, i plus equals two. And if we try that out, it will skip over every other element when outputting the array elements. And we get one, three, five, seven, nine. So if we have something complicated we wanna do with the execution of the loop in terms of maybe skipping over elements or maybe starting the loop over again halfway through, things like that, we can't do that with this range-based for loop. But a range-based for loop is great for any situation where we just wanna do something for each element in an array or whatever other range we're working with. Now, this here doesn't have to be a variable. We could put a range expression here. So something like this would work as well. We could say one, two, three, four, five here. If I save this and run it, that will also work. So any range expression will actually be okay here. One thing we gotta be aware of is if we're using the array container class, then we've gotta be mindful of the size of the array. So if here we said array int 50, and then I said my array is equal to nine, eight, seven, six, five. Here, we have an array with size 50. 
but we've only initialized the first five elements of the array. If here then I say for int element colon my array, what's going to happen is the range based for loop is going to execute for the size of the array, not the number of elements we initialized. So if we save this and run it, we're going to find we get a whole bunch of zeros here. And then way up at the top, there we have the 98765. So that's just something we have to be aware of when we use the range based for loop. Now we can use the range based for loop with things like character arrays or vectors, anything that is a range. So what we could do is say car string is equal to, and we could have some characters in a string here. Then we could use a range based for loop to count the number of S characters in the string. So we could say int S count is equal to zero. We could say for car C in the string. If C is equal to the character S, then increment S count by one. And we could output the S count when we're all done. So we say S count colon output the S count followed by a couple end lines here. And right now we have one, two, three S's. So let's save this and run it. And we'll find we get an S count of three. So we can work with character arrays and all kinds of things as well. Now, one thing we have to be mindful of when using the range based for loop is if we're going to try to use it in a function, where the array has been passed in as an argument. So for example, let's make a function here. We'll say void func1 int array. So the function is going to accept an array as a argument. And then we'll use a range based for loop in the function. So we'll say for int element colon array. And we'll output each element in the array again. Then down in our main function, we'll try to call func1 and pass it an array. So we'll say int my array is equal to one, two, three, four, five. And we'll call func1 with my array. And this seems like it should work because we've defined an array in our main function. We're passing it to func1. Func1 seems to accept an array as an argument. And so presumably we should be able to use it with a range based for loop. But if we save this and run it, we'll get this error here. The error says cannot build range expression with array function parameter array. Since parameter with array type int open bracket, close bracket is treated as pointer type int star. So what goes on in C sort of under the hood? is that when we pass an array to a function like this, what we're really passing is a pointer to an int, a pointer to the first integer in this array here. We're really passing in a memory address. We're not passing in the array itself. That's why we get this error. That's why we can't use the range based for loop in this situation. Now there is a technique we could use that involves reference variables and templates to pull this off, but it's pretty sophisticated. I'll leave a link to that in the description. This is how we can use range based for loops in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.